Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Even though the salam response was not too good, mashallah, the mox is full to brim, I can see from the front tail to the last end of the wall. So I expect that salam to be way louder than that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, 60%. I, we need to make it at least 100. So one more time, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ahlul iman. MashaAllah, this is good. This is good, MashaAllah. At least now I can feel the oneness of your hearts. At least now I can feel welcomed, MashaAllah, in a grand way. May Allah bless you and grant you paradise. Say Ameen. My brothers and sisters, if there may be any here or if those that will watch this online, I begin in the name of Allah always. And Allah is the one that created us from nothing to something. Allah is the one that created us when we don't even have the ability to do anything. He created our parents before they even knew they would even give birth to us. Allah is the one that is the kingdom of the heavens and the skies. He is the owner of everything that is in existence. He owns you, he owns your parents, he owns the planet, he owns every single thing you see, the trees, the rivers, whatever it may be. These are provisions that Allah has placed forth on earth so that me and you can enjoy. So Alhamdulillah. We send blessings and salutations upon the best man to walk on the face of earth. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is the messenger of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final messenger of Allah. And the most noble of all the messengers of Allah and the most respected and dignified of all the messengers of Allah. May Allah grant him peace. May Allah grant his companions acceptance. May Allah make it easy for us to meet with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the day we shall be returning to Allah. Say Ameen. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Today we have a short muhadara, if I can call it a nasiha. And you know the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Adinu an Nasiha. The Deen is a Nasiha. They says, Oh Messenger of Allah, to who? He says, Well, the Nasiha is for to people on Allah and His messengers and His books and His angels and wa immatil Muslimina wa ammatihim and to the Muslims and also their leaders. So to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who? And their leaders, right? The nasiha I have for you today is, I know that you guys are living in a different part of Nigeria that I come from. I come from the northern part of the country. And in the northern part of the country, the weather is not as good as it is here. The only problem that I have seen is, the weather is good here, but it is very hot. In the northern part of the country, the weather is very, very hot, so you expect it to be very hot. Because in Abuja, before I left, I think we were clocking to somewhere around 36, 37 degrees Celsius. But I don't know what is the weather in Patakot. But regardless of the weather in Patakot, what is most important is for me and you to believe in Allah. It's for me and you to have full faith in Allah. It's for me and you to have taqwa in Allah. And this is why part of the nasiha that I'm going to give you today is to remind you on what Allah has made permissible for you and what Allah has instructed you to do. So I'm going to do something today. I did not tell the brothers, but I'm going to do it this way. Brother Abu Bakr here will recite every verse that starts with Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu from Surah Al-Baqarah and we translate the verse and we apply the meaning of the verse in our lives. Do you want us to do that? Yeah. Insha'Allah. So Brother Abu Bakr, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the first Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu in Surah Al-Baqarah. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyone, any Alazina Amun. But let's start from Surah Al Baqarah. Yeah, I got the data up to 
الإسلام Mashallah. You know why I chose this? When we were coming here, all of us were discussing with the brothers. What topic are we going to speak about today? What are we going to speak about today? Then I told them, someone gave a topic, we shall speak about peaceful coexistence. Someone gave another topic, then I said, no. It is important for us to know why we are even called believers. It is important to know why Allah has actually singled us out in the Quran to say, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Anyone that Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Allah is referring to a person who believes in Allah and who believes that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. Anyone whom Allah is referring to as Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu is a person that believes in the angels of Allah. All of them, from Jibreel who was the highest of them, all the way to the lowest one. Anyone who believes or anyone who is called Ya Ayyuhallazina Amanu is a person who believes in all the prophets of Allah, starting from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Anyone who Allah calls Ya Ayyuhallazina Amanu is a person who believes in the books of Allah, starting from the book that was given to David. What is the name of the book that was given to David? Yes, my brother. Zabur, Imam, you are answering for them. Let them answer, inshallah. Zabur, all the way to the Quran, which was the most powerful. If Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Allah is referring to a person that is ready to die and meet him on the day of Qiyamah. If Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Allah is also referring to a person that when goodness happens to him, he thanks Allah. When evil happens to him, he bears patience and he moves on. So that is qadr, khayrihi aw sharrihi min Allah. So the brother, he recited the verse that something is coming to us very soon a celebration which is known as what which is known as ramadan because it is indeed a celebration from allah allah has sent ramadan for me and you as a purifying month allah has sent ramadan for me and you as a month that we should be achieving taqwa allah says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun allah wants you to achieve taqwa then allah says ayyaman ma'adudat these days are counted these days are not something that you are going to do forever no they are special days that we have removed in the calendar 29 or 30 days depending on the moon sighting allah says فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا Any one of you who has the ability to fast in the month of Ramadan should fast in the month of Ramadan. If you have traveled and you don't have the ability, maybe for some reasons you cannot fast in cause of your transit, Allah says you have to repay the fast when you can repay the fast. At the same time, if you are ill or you have a certain condition, which you cannot fulfill that fast for. Allah says you can feed, but wa anta sumu khayrul lakum. Fasting, it is better and it is more close in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Ramadan? How do we prepare for Ramadan? When Allah says we have made something obligatory on you, all of us, we need to think about it. Why is it that Allah says this is obligatory? That means it has a lot of importance. That means it is very important. In the morning, I was given a sermon at uh, Elon Lowo. Elelongo, inshallah, I will, I will get this name from this time. Elelongo, Central Mox. And when I was there, I was mentioning about when we have a celebration coming up, when we have a wedding plan or we have something, don't we prepare for it? We do, right? Why is it that we can prepare for the month of Ramadan when Allah says we are giving you this month la'allakum tattaqoon so that you may achieve taqwa? Brother Abu Bakr, give me another verse of taqwa in the Quran just for taqwa. 
Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, taqullaha, O you who believe. Imagine Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam. And here Allah also says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, taqullaha. Who is Allah referring to? Me and you, right? Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, taqullaha, haqqa tuqati. O you who believe, you have to fear Allah. You have to give Allah the right of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that you need to do for the sake of Allah, you need to do it in the best way, in the most appropriate of ways, whether in Ramadan, whether not in Ramadan, whether your salah, whether your zakah, whether your hajj, whether the way you speak to people. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us, speaking to people in a good way, there is a reward. And Allah says in the Quran, Qawlun ma'rufun, Allah says ma'rufun to speak good, to be a person that speak to people in a good way, wa and giving also forgiveness. Allah says Khairun min sadaqatin. it is better than a charity, yet bauha other that is caused with a harm. So when you give someone a charity and you see him tomorrow, you say, brother, you know, I did that for you. Brother, you know, I did this for you. In front of people, we are very fond of doing this today. You see someone, you say, oh, this was the shoe I gave you. If it was not for me, you wouldn't have won that shoe. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, speaking good and forgiveness, it is even better than that charity. It is better. Allah sees it with great reward than that charity. So Allah says, Ittaqullaha haqqa tuqati. You should fear Allah the way Allah is supposed to be feared. Wala tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. And don't die unless you are a condition or in you are in the condition of what? Of Islam. Don't die until you are in a condition of Islam. What is Allah trying to tell you? Allah is trying to tell you no matter whatever problems you are going through, never reject your faith. Be an upright person. Continue striving in the doors of Islam. You will definitely succeed. Brother Abakar, give me another verse referring to that. <laughs> Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, Istainu, seek assistance with sobari, with patience, with salah, and prayer. It can also be classified as dua. Inna Allah ma'asabirin, Allah is with those that are very patient. So if you look at the first verse, and the second verse, and the third verse, all of them, they are linking joints. Why? Because in the month of Ramadan, he started with, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu kutiba alaykum usiyam. Can you fast in the month of Ramadan when you don't have taqwa in Allah? No. So that is from the first part where Allah says, Ittaqullaha. And then if you look at this verse, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabari was salah. Can you fast in the month of Ramadan without sabr? You need to have sabr for it. Because, for example, I was telling them in the UK, we fast for 21 hours. If we don't have sabr ala ta'atillahi, we cannot fast for that 21 hours. In Nigeria, how many hours are you fasting? 16 hours, 17 hours, or 18 hours? But even if it's five hours, whenever there is something for the pleasure of Allah, you need to bear patience to be able to move to that. And Allah says, with sabari was salah, and also with prayer, and also with calling out to us, what do you do in the month of Ramadan? What do you do in the month of Ramadan? You call out to Allah. You ask Allah for something. You make a dua unto Allah. You ask Allah to forgive your sin. Allah says, In Allah ma'asabirin, I am together with those that are very patient. Allah says in the fifth juz'ah of the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, 
Allah says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnakum or you who believe feed from what we have given to you anfiqu mimma razaqnakum give people from what we have given to you min qabli an ya'tiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wala khullatun wala shafa'a wal kafiruna humu dhalimun Allah says feed from that my brothers and sisters when you see the month of ramadan comes what do you do in the month of ramadan don't you feed I think in Patakot they don't feed them. Do you see charities like AMP in Ramadan giving out donations? I don't think. Brother Uthman. We, we take the communities outside, outside Patakot. Okay, outside Patakot. But you know the month of Ramadan is a month of celebration, right? So when it's time for iftar, you come together with your family or whoever you have or whatever they may be. Allah says, "Anfiqu mimma razaqnakum." Feed from what we have provided you. Someone will say you can only feed until you have money. No, that is not it. You can feed whether you have money, whether you don't have money. How? Allah has provided you with knowledge. You can also give people knowledge. Allah has provided you with maybe something you can give people of an advice that is also a risk from Allah that you can never pay Allah for. Whether you have money or you don't have money, that fact doesn't mean itself that you are going to be exempted from that. No, it means that you are going to also give a charity that Allah has asked you to do because you shall be achieving a great reward in the month of Ramadan. If you look at this brother is very, mashallah, systematic. If you look at the verses he was selecting, all of them, they happen to be connected to Ramadan. All of them. From taqwa to sabr to salah to what? To giving out. It's all connected to the month of Ramadan, which is charity. Okay, and next one. No problem. <laughs> This is verse 200 of Surah Al-Ali Imran, the last verse. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, isbiru, you should be patient. If you look at the first or the second verse that we brought in Surah Al-Baqarah, it is related to patience. But Allah here, he added something. Warabiqu, and also protect your borders. Protect your territory. Protect your vicinity and fear Allah so that you may be successful yesterday you you brought a brother to me right professor Othman his name is brother Chiroma right and then when he recited this verse where Allah says and also secure your borders he came to my mind do you relate now mashallah and protect your borders. What does it mean? You should protect the rights of other Muslims that Allah has placed on you. What are the rights of Muslims upon Muslims? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, there are five rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim. Five of them. What is number one? Salam. at takbir To see your brother, to say Salamu Alaikum to your brother, it is a duty that Allah has placed on you. Whether you like it or not, Allah says, Wa iza huyitum. Allah says, Wa iza huyitum bi tahiyyatin fahayyu bi ahsana minha aw rudduha. If someone says Salamu alaikum to you, Allah says you should respond the similar way or even a better way. So if I say salamu alaykum to you, Allah is telling me, you when you are replying, say wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The minimum I can do is to make sure I reply you or you reply me the way I've given you. So I can say salamu alaykum to you and then you will just say wa alaykum. It doesn't make sense. So Allah says, fahayyu bi ahsana minha aw rudduha. You should respond with something better. That is the first condition. If you can do better, then you should respond with a similar tone or a similar way that it was given to you. Allah says, indeed, he is all-knowing. He is all-compassing. What is the second right of a Muslim upon another Muslim? 
visiting him if he's not well. This is another right. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, out of the right that a Muslim has upon another Muslim is to make sure that if he is not feeling fine, you go and visit him. The hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, any one of you who goes to visit a sick person and dies on his way, coming back, that person will be granted entry into paradise. That person will be given paradise as a result of the act of ibadah to visit a fellow brother who is not feeling well. This is another right. My brothers, how many of us today, when we are informed, this person has a headache. Okay, headache is a minor thing, okay? But let's go to something serious. This person has a cancer. This person has a broken leg. This person has a broken nose. How many of us go to see them and greet them and ask them, brother, how can I help you? What help do you want from me? How many of us? We need to mind our ways. We need to repair that. It is a broken value that we need to take and amend it. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man nafasa an mu'minin kurbatan min dunya, kurbatan min kurabi dunya, nafasallahu anhu min kurabi yawm al qiyamah. A person who assists a believer in any problem that they may be having on earth, Allah will assist him on the day of Qiyamah. Don't be a type of person that you don't reach out. Reach out to people. Coexistence, it is very important. Reach out to people. Allah says, even if your enemies come to you. Imagine. Allah says, even if your enemies come to you and they want peace, you should also be peaceful with them. Can you give us the verse? Your enemies. Tawbah. <laughs> Tawbah 108 wa injana huka bisalmi fajlahna wa tawakkal ala Allah. Did you hear the verse? Is it lahum or laha? Laha, mashallah. This is the Quran. This is the power of the Quran. Are you now happy that we are responding to each other? That is the brotherhood that Allah has kept within us. If we did not study, if we don't have a hack upon one another, will we ever know there was an, a little bit of an error from what he recited? No. So Allah says, even if the enemies reach out to you and they are seeking for peace, Allah says you should be peaceful with them. You should give them peace. Allah says, وَإِن يُرِيدُوا أَنْ يَخْدَعُوكَ Masha'Allah. Allah says, if they come to you and they want to deceive you, Allah says, Fa inna hasbak Allah. Allah is enough for you. Sufficient is Allah for you. So what Allah is telling you is, as long as you are a believer, no one can cheat you. No one can deceive you. No one can do anything wrong to you as long as you're a believer. Someone will ask me a question, but Sheikh, someone stole some biscuit from my shop the other day. Why did Allah not protect me from that? Or like the issue that was raised in the masjid, someone stole the phone at Salat al-Taraweeh. What happened? Did Allah not protect? No. What it means here is Allah is sufficient for you. That biscuit that someone stole in your shop, maybe if you would have sold that biscuit, somebody will come back and he will tell you that you've given him an expired biscuit and there will be a court case. So has Allah not protected you? Allah has protected you. Or if you look at it from another perspective, that biscuit you may have sold, somebody may have eaten the biscuit and he's going to have a problem with eating that biscuit. And if they are from a wealthier family than you are, they can jail you for no reason. They can actually serve injustice to you. Did Allah not protect you? So Allah says he's sufficient for you. Wallillahi mathalul a'la. Allah has a far higher, greater example than this. So we were speaking about warabi'u and protect your territories, whether it's in your house, whether it's in your workplace, whatever it may be. Allah says it is a duty for you as long as you're a believer, whether you are working for a non-Muslim, you have to protect the amana they gave you. 
You have to protect their wealth. You have to protect their territory. Because why? You actually look at that and you sign the contract that you want to work with them. Allah says there is no exception. It's an amana and you have to protect it. Give us a verse on amana, brother. Allah is explaining when it comes to amana, when it comes to a trust, when it comes to a sacrifice that you have done to take care of something, Allah is telling you the importance of that amana. Allah is telling you the greatness that he has kept in form of amana. So any one of you who is going to eat an amana unlawfully, unjust, Allah says we are going to have a big problem with him. We are going to punish him on the day of Qiyamah. In another verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah says if you hate people, whether you hate them, don't be unjust towards them. You may be a person that doesn't like someone, but Allah tells you you have to be just. Give us the verse. Allah says, "Wala yadri manakum shahadu qawmin ala alla ta'bihu bi'ilu wa aqrabu lit-taqwa." Allah is telling you. What was the first thing we mentioned when it came to the month of Ramadan? Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ And now Allah is saying, you have to be just. Taqwa is not only fasting in the month of Ramadan. It's not only praying in the month of Ramadan. It's not only about giving charity in the month of Ramadan. Another part of taqwa is also Allah says Aqrab. In, in the Arabic language, when that alif comes, it is the most closest it can ever get. It is the closest to Allah. Allah is saying, for you to be just, for you to serve justice, Allah said, that is the closest you can be to me. Not Ramadan, not Salah, not Hajj. No. I'dil, justice. Al Adil, justice. Because when you have a mind of being just you will be just with your salah you will be just with your ramadan you will be just with your hajj how can you be just with all the acts of ibadah by making sure you have fulfilled every right and the step of that ibadah and how it shall be done am i right so allah says if you want to achieve piety then you have to be a just person because that is the closest that you can ever get to us. Before that, Allah says, You may have a problem with another person. You may have an issue with another person. But Allah says, never ever allow your problem makes you become unjust with them. Because when you become unjust with them, you are not close to us. You have actually left our way because Allah is the most just. And Allah is the one who will serve justice. And from his justice, we shall be achieving Jannah al Firdaus. Say, Ameen. Another verse of Ya Ayyuhalladheena Amanu. Allah. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم. Allah says, O you who believe, أطيعوا الله, obey Allah, be dutiful unto Allah, وأطيعوا الرسول, obey the messenger of Allah who is Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah says, وأولي الأمر منكم. And people like Professor Uthman, the chief Imam here, and all those that have authority over you, Allah says, you have to obey them. If you differ, if you have differences, whatever it may be, 
on the religion then you go back to Allah and his messenger what it means is to go back to the Quran and to go back to the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah said this is better for you and this can be purifying for you in another verse in the Quran Allah says in kuntum fi shakin surah yunus in kuntum fi shakin mimma Yes, but I think it will cover the camera because of the camera. Allah says, if you have doubt on what we have revealed, if you have a problem on what we have revealed, Allah says, Mimma anzalna ilayka fas'ali ladhini yaqara'oon al-kitaba min qablik. Ask those that were reading the books. Ask those that have a relationship with us before you. Ask those that understand Islam before you. A lot of people today, they may be having a lot of questions, but they don't want to ask a question. They don't want to reach out to people to give them an answer. My brothers and sisters, you cannot be living in darkness. You cannot be living in gloominess. You have to come out. Islam is a religion of light, and you have to take from the light of Islam that Allah has favored you with. You have an issue, you have a concern, be dutiful unto Allah. Allah says, Allah, you have to obey Allah. Whatever Allah tells you in the Quran, to the best of your ability, stay away from it. Whatever Allah tells you in the Quran also to do, to the best of your ability, make sure you've done it. And Allah says also to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you need to actually follow the Messenger. You need to look at his life. Allah said, uh, regarding the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Give us a verse where Allah says we should follow him. He has the best character. But can I look for Rasulullah? Allah says, for you there is a messenger that you need to follow. You need to take from his signs. You need to take from whatever Allah has given him. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ For the one who fears Allah وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ and the last day. So Allah is telling you, you need to follow the messenger. You need to see his life, the way he did his business, the way he ate his food, the way he drank his water, the way he works, the way he wears his clothes, everything. You need to follow the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, if you don't do that, if you stay around fighting one another, if you stay around bragging and you are causing so much of problem, Allah says, your power will be snatched. Allah says, Allah, you should obey Allah and His Messenger. Allah says that if you should be connected, if you should be a uniformed human, if you should have unity from amongst you, Allah says, then you will be a good person. But if you segregate, if you divide the ummah, if you fight on issues that are not even worth fighting, Allah says, he is going to take away habari hukum. He is going to take away from your strength. Allah says, wasbiru and be patient. So Allah is telling you, he knows between you and the other brother, there may be a problem. But Allah is telling you, let that, let, don't allow that problem to be a reason for you to separate. Because what brings you together is Iman. And Iman is greater than any problem that you may be having. Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, Wa'atasimu. Allah says, MashaAllah, Be together and hold on to the rope of Allah. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't be separated. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the favor of Allah upon you. If كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً Before you were enemies, فَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah mended your hearts together. فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا 
you guys actually became with the ni'mah of Allah, brothers. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَىٰ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ You are assisting each other in making sure that all of you don't go to hellfire for another kuminha and you stay away from it. Which tribe? Banu Aus and Banu Khazraj. There's two tribes Allah revealed that this verse on them. There were certain tribe at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they were having issue. Allah says, فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانًا on the blessings and the ni'mah of Allah, you actually saw yourself, now you are brothers. What made them brothers? Ni'mah of Islam, iman that Allah has given them, the wisdom that Allah has given them, and the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers, my sisters, we are brothers. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, Inna mu'minuna ikhwa. The believers are nothing but brothers. For aslihu bayna akhawaykum. You should actually create reconcilement between yourselves. And what taqullah? Fear Allah. Laallakum. So that you may be what? So that Allah will have mercy on you. So Allah is telling you, if I and you today, we don't have an issue and we have good relationship, that alone can give us mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah says, was sulhu khair. Sulh is goodness. There is nothing wrong with sulh. If you were to do sulh, if, if you were to reconcile between two people, there is a reward for you. And the two people that have reconciled after fighting, Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ We are going to have mercy on you. If you notice today, it is a roller coaster in the Quran. Today we are jumping from one place to another in the Quran. Right? Give me another, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Then we close, inshallah, with Q&A. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la Allah, MashaAllah. He says from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, you should not actually step down from the amana that Allah has given you and that which the Messenger of Allah has given you. Whatever amana it is that was given to you, your salah is an amana, your wife is an amana, your children are an amana, your money is an amana, your body is an amana, your nose is an amana, your car is an amana, your legs are an amana from Allah, your business is an amana. Everything that Allah has given you is an amana. He is going to ask you about it. He is going to ask you about every single blessing he has given you. Everything that Allah has given you, Allah will definitely ask you about it. Allahu Akbar. Are you ready to answer Allah? Are you ready to answer Allah? Insha'Allah, we will be able to give an answer that Allah, you have given us our legs. We've taken our legs to the right places. We've come to the masjid and we've listened to a lecture. Oh Allah, you've given us an eyes whenever we see an illicit image on Instagram, oh Allah, we say Astaghfirullah and we skip it. This is an amana. This is an amana. Allah has given you that amana. Whatever you do, it's going to be written. It's going to be manifested. Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, we are going to seal their mouths. What is going to speak? اليوم نختم على أفواههم. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا وتشهد بما كانوا يعملون. سورة ياسين. Allah says on the day of Qiyamah we are going to seal their mouth. Their mouth will not be open. 
What is going to speak for you, your hands? Imagine your hand saying, I took a money that doesn't belong. Well, not my hand, actually. Your hand somewhere saying, I took a money that doesn't belong to me. Imagine your legs saying, I've gone to a place that I'm not supposed to be. Do you want to face Allah with such a situation? Allah says, well, that is an amana. You are not going to belay the amana of Allah and the amana of the messenger and the amana that is between you guys as believers. وَتَكُونُوا amanatikum." And the amana that is between all of us. Allah says you are not going to also insult it. You are not going to take it as a joke. You are not going to take it as a fun. And Allah says beware your wives and your children. They are a fitna. They are a test for you. They are a test for you whether you like it or not. Allah says we've placed them for you as a test. And the only way that your children and your wife will be good for you in the hereafter is only if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ بِالَّتِي وَمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ بِالَّتِي تُقَرِّبُكُمْ إِنْدَنَا زُلْفَ إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنْ وَمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي تُقَرِّبُنَا عِنْدَنَا زُلْفَا <laughs> Allah says on the day of Qiyama, you should know this, whether you like it or not. Your wives, your children, in the other verse, Allah says, you should know. Your wife and your children, fitna is a fitna for you. Allah says, well, if you want to escape from that fitna, better know that your wife or your children or whatever money you have can never make you close to us. Except those that believe in Allah and they do good in what Allah has asked them to do in the dunya. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, anyone that wants to see Allah, you have to do good. <coughs> Allah says, Whoever wants to meet Allah, do you want to meet Allah? I don't think so. Do you want to meet Allah? Do you want to meet Allah? Yes. Allah says, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا You need to do good deeds. You need to do good deeds. You cannot go to Allah with a bad deed. إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى طَيِّبٌ Allah is pure and clean. So you need to go with good deeds to be able to commiserate to see Allah. You need to go with good deeds to be able to qualify a chance to see Allah. May Allah grant us the ability to see him on the day of Qiyamah. All of us say Ameen. Together with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah says you need to do good. You need to be an upright person. Allah says beware your family, your money, whatever it may be, it is a fitna, but you can use it in a better way. Then Allah says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu in tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana. If you were to fear Allah, what is the key word here? What is the key word? Taqwa, mashallah. Yes, the consciousness of Allah. Taqwa is the key word. If you notice, today I can say this entire lecture was about taqwa. Because everything we go and discuss about and we come back, it revolves into taqwa. It still goes back to taqwa. So my brothers and sisters, Allah says, in taqullaha, if you were to fear Allah, yaj'al lakum furqana, Allah will grant you criterion, the ability to differentiate between good and bad. Wa yaghafir lakum dhunubakum, and Allah is going to forgive your sins. Is there anything that we're asking Allah more than Allah to forgive our sins? No. Because all we want is Allah to forgive us. 
All we want is Allah to grant us entry into Jannah. Allah says, when you believe and you have taqwa, then certainly, certainly we are going to give you the ability to do that differentiation between that which is right and which is wrong. And by the grace of Allah, he says, he is going to forgive your entire sins. MashaAllah. How is it? Alhamdulillah. But I think it was Alhamdu, not Lillah, because your voices were not good. How was it? Alhamdulillah. If you notice, we were reading all from the Quran. We were reading all from the book of Allah. My brothers, my sisters, this same book that we were making reference to, we are approaching the month where the book has been revealed. Where the book was revealed, we should make respect for Ramadan and also for Quran to make sure during Ramadan, we are actually coming to the Taraweeh, listening to the Quran, and we are enjoying from the recitation. Don't look for the fastest Taraweeh. Don't look for the fastest Taraweeh. Because when you are too in a haste to deliver something good for Allah, you may fall out of it because Allah is not hasteful. Allah wants something to be done with dedication, devotion. Allah wants you to be upright. And Allah says, Quran is what you are going to hold. Why? Because this Quran that you see, it is Huda, it is a guidance. So we are approaching the month of Ramadan. We shall be ready to see the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah grant us the ability to see Ramadan. I hope all the words that I have discussed here, we will go back and think of each of the words that were recited from the Quran and we will implement them in our life insha'Allah barakallahu lakum wa as'alullaha in yaghafir lakum wa as'alullaha an yuwafiqakum fi kulli a'amalikum aqulu gawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina muhammad assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh